Well, the return of the Blasty jersey, the horse head that the Calgary Flames made synonymous between 1998 and 2006, and one of the names that came up, and if you do the Google search and uh, type in the Blasty, or maybe it's the memories of watching Flames games over those years, uh, one name, one man that is synonymous with it is uh, Valerie Burry, and Val joins us now uh, from California. Uh, maybe just first of all, before we get back into the jersey, uh, how are you and the family doing, and, uh, and where do we find you? Uh, we do well. We're in California, uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, you know, we have uh, three older kids, 22, 20, and 18. They're all out of the house. So Candace and I have really been enjoying a quiet home. Uh, it's been uh, a, a long road, but we do enjoy it. So uh, life has been really good. This has been great to, uh, to do so and uh, to find you here as well. I mean, maybe first of all, let's just go into uh, the memories as we bring back uh, this sort of iconic jersey now for the Calgary Flames. But um, w when you remember uh, coming and joining the Calgary Flames and uh, the idea of this jersey uh, making its debut, what do you remember about those early days? Well, you know, it's, it, was, it was in the beginning, it was very interesting. Uh, anytime you get introduced to something new, you're not so sure about it. You're like, well, really? Is, is that how it's going to look? And then uh, as we kind of put it on and start wearing it, it was our third jersey. We didn't wear it that often, but uh, it was uh, it grew on us. And it became, you know, I, I, I believe we were winning the games while we were wearing it. So it became even more special to us. And then we absolutely loved it. Uh, we were couldn't wait to wear that third jersey because it was something special since we didn't wear it that often. And I, I would assume that uh, now that if you've uh, the times passed on, do you, first of all, do you still, you still have a, a jersey somewhere? You, you've kept it uh, around you. Uh, but as time's gone on, it seems like at least in these parts, it's become even more famous. And now uh, everybody uh, is kind of calling for the return of it. What about uh, for you? Has it grown uh, even closer, more fondly to you over the years? Well, you know, those jerseys, I mean, obviously I've been retired for many, many years. And every time I look at the jerseys that I wear in the past, um, I, you know, I, I really enjoy that. So I was telling uh uh, you know, a few of the friends of mine that that's one of my favorite jerseys because, uh, you know, number one, I had a, one of the best times in the National Hockey League in Calgary. And I really enjoyed the atmosphere from, you know, coaching staff to uh, management and our organization just in general. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, this, this jersey means a lot to me. Like I said, we were winning. We're having fun. I think we set the record in the overtime wins or something like this. Um, so as, as I'm looking at this and looking at from the past I, I really it really brings me back with a good memory so it's always nice to have that well yeah and you had the 35 goal season you led the Calgary Flames um, in scoring that year um, maybe just your how you look back on on your time as a member of the Calgary Flames uh, how you look back on the city you know, I loved it from the day uh, I, I, to, to go back, you know, when I did get traded and I said, listen, there's two cities I don't want to go back or go to get traded to. I said, Edmonton and Calgary. I said, I just don't want to go there. And they go, well, congratulations. You're going to Calgary. I'm like, oh, my gosh. No, no. Because, you know, uh, number one, I, uh, you know, I heard that Brian Sutter was really, really hard coach to play for. And, uh you know, the, the city was cold and I was just not sure. So the, the minute that we land uh, in Calgary, everything has changed. The people were so nice and welcoming. Um, you know, I get invited uh, to people's houses for dinner and I didn't even know them. And uh, the minute that I start introduced to the management, to the team, to the guys, players, um, it, it became my favorite spot to play. And, uh, you know, one of my best coaches I played for is a Brian Sutter. Uh, I, I, I love that guy. He was so honest with me, um, straightforward, very demanding, uh, love his guys. Favorite stop in the National Hockey League by far. It's so great to hear. And, and I mean, I would imagine, yeah, that, that success on the ice has probably has a lot to do with it too. But I mean, what do you remember about that 35 goal a year and just how things were going? I mean, it was you and, uh, you know, I, I know Jerome was kind of right back there. He hadn't had his first 30 goal season yet, I don't think, but it was kind of, you know, as you're watching Jerome kind of rise up through the ranks as well, right beside you. Yeah, it was, it was fun because, you know, uh, you know, Egan and I we were roommates for I think two and a half, three years there. So we we got to know each other very well. We've seen plenty of one another. Uh, and then the best thing about it, we both loved our naps during pregame. So we could sleep, you know, be anywhere between two and a half and three and a half hours in the afternoon. And it was perfect. So 
we, we got along very well. But, uh, you know, you look at that team, we, in my beliefs, again, we were about a year away from really breaking through. If you look at the lineup and who we had from, you know, from uh, Jerome to uh, Corey Stillman to me to, uh, you know, we had a house lead. We, we had, I mean, Derek Morris. I mean, it, the, it just keeps going, going on and on and on. And I don't think they gave us a chance to succeed because we were a year to two ways. They were not patient enough. So, and then they, you know, fire, I, I believe they fire uh, uh, Brian Sutter and it, it just went off from there. But uh, I, I wish we had opportunity to be a more successful and give City uh, the chance to see how we really shine. Maybe just uh, give us an idea of what uh, retirement has looked like. You mentioned uh, three kids, obviously now kind of all out of high school, all moving on with their uh, with their lives as well. But uh, that would have been a busy house post retirement, I would assume. And uh, obviously, the work that Candice has been doing. Um, uh, maybe just tell us what uh, retirement has been, how it's evolved, and, and what you've been up to. Well, you know, in, in the beginning when I re, you know finished playing hockey, I said, "Listen, fantastic! I will just sit, you know, by the pool and we'll do absolutely nothing. I, you know, I will never be at the gym, never exercise." And you know, it, it took me about three to four months, and and I said, "No, I, you know, this is not what I want to do." Uh, I was lucky enough to jump into a wine business almost immediately and start uh, our own brand in two thousand and six. Um, so I was doing this on top of this, uh, I helped coaching my, uh, you know, middle and a younger kid, uh, and Candace after hiatus for 10 years, because, you know, I, I was playing hockey and she was raising the kids and, uh, she started working. So I would be at home with kids for months at a time, just taking care of them and, uh, you know, my business. So the last 15 years, you know, were much more busier and when I was playing hockey because when you play hockey it's you know you're playing you're taking a meal and you know practices very very uh you know a set oriented where you have three kids you just never know what they're going to wake up with what kind of a personalities and uh as people that know and have kids they know that you know I believe as of today we don't give enough credit to mothers that stay home and raise kids because it's it is a very difficult job to do, and especially if you're involved uh, and want to raise a, uh, good kids. So, like I said, today, uh, my main focus on our brand, we're producing just under a thousand cases in Napa Valley of a you know, very premium luxury uh, wine brand, uh, concentrated only on the Cabernet Sauvignons. Uh, my middle son has now uh, been working with me for a year and a half, which is absolutely dream come true. And uh, Candace has been busy shooting. I, sh I think she's in Vancouver right now uh, doing a movie for a Hallmark channel. I'm going to throw one more uh, about the Blasty jersey for you. And uh, this is on, something I'm going to ask everybody. I just want to know, because everyone has kind of their distinct memory about it. But when you think of that jersey, is there one story? Is there one person that comes to mind? Uh, something that jumps out that you kind of remember uh, fondly? Or maybe it's uh, something the other way as well. You know, the, the, like I told you before, I think it's uh, it, it's only fond memories. You know, you don't look at the jersey. Like I look at the Montreal Canadiens jersey, for example, and I look at it and I go, okay, this is a team that draft me. So there's that memory right. of that. Um, and say, you know, uh, whatever it was at the Dallas Stars, so there's certain memories. But with not only with that jersey, with that jersey special, that I remember the, just a good – atmosphere feeling about it and the, the things that I remember as as I told you before we were we were winning and and back then they switched it uh from five on five to four on four overtime and you know with our skating ability from you know Sabi, Jerome, Housley, me, uh, Corey Stima we were we were just flying and they could not stop us so we were winning those overtime games and I guess that's what the moment is to me that I will take away from, uh, and it's not necessarily success. It's just, it's just, we had fun. We had yeah. fun working hard. And uh, anytime I guess you having fun, you always remember it. Yeah. Well said. Absolutely. And uh, congratulations to you on the winery and uh, the family and all the best moving forward. It was good to catch up with you. Likewise. Thank you for having me.